Welcome back folks. We've got another episode of Chord Shapes and today we're going to be diving into a bit of microtonality. So we all know and love the standard 12 tone tuning that equally divides the octave by 12 notes, but divide the octave by more than 12 notes and we get new pitches to explore. So let's take a look at 19 EDO. 19 notes equally divided through the octave. We got seven new notes here and a great way to know how to use them is learning the chord shapes of the tuning. So let's get into it. So as I said, knowing the chord shapes of any given tuning is a great jumping off point on how to use notes that may be new to you. And this works because of the mathematical perfection of isomorphism, which when applied to a keyboard like Lumitone means we can learn the shape of any chord type, say a minor seven, and we can plop that same shape on any other root note to play another minor seven. But let's just first start by seeing how 1980O lays its notes out. Like most EDOs, we're using the piano-like layout with all the white notes being the naturals. and the blues being the sharps. But now we have the sharps and flats being their own distinct notes. So the flats are represented by the orange. And then we also have these green keys being the E sharp and the B sharp. So this is a nice logical extension of 12 video, and it's organized in a very clear and concise way. So let's see what shapes we can get from this tuning. There's certainly some repeating shapes from 12 video, as well as other videos, but it's important to remember that even the same chord, like a major triad, is gonna sound different from tuning to tuning, as the intervals are gonna land differently with each different division of the octave. So let's start with the familiar chords. We have the major triad, and the minor triad. We got the suspended fourth and the suspended second. The diminished triad and the augmented triad. So all these shapes are the same as in 12 video, which is great for switching from tuning to tuning. They all have new flavors to them, but there's really no relearning any shapes with those. But two new triads we now have access to are the subminor, with the third here being one step below the minor, and the super major, which has its third sitting a step above the major third. And let's just mix some of these up and get a feel for how this tuning sounds. Moving on here, we have some more familiar shapes with the major six, the major seven, the minor seven, and the dominant seven. And again, while those shapes are the same in 12 video, they all sound quite different and unique. The minor flat six feels real nice in 19 video. But we now have access to a new seventh chord that 12 EDO doesn't, the harmonic seven, played with a major third and a seventh that sits one step below the minor seven. In other tunings, such as 31 EDO, this chord approximates really well, while here in 19 EDO, it sits pretty flat, though it still gives an interesting vibe. Of course, we have the ninth chords, we have the major nine, the minor nine, and the dominant nine. But now we have the option to play the harmonic ninth. Other variations on these with 19 could be the flat nine, one step below the nine, play it with a dominant seven, or a harmonic seven. Now, since we have all these extra steps, of course, we can build chords using our sub minor or super major thirds, as well as getting some interesting diminished and augmented tetrads. But things start feeling pretty 19 EDO ish. So we have the sub minor seven, which uses the harmonic seven and a sub minor third. 
and the super major seven, which uses a super major third and a septimal major seven. One of my faves is the minor seven flat six, which works rather well in 19. Or we could play a diminished seventh. Or pop that seven up to the minor seven to play a minor seven flat five. Which feels more stable, but it keeps that eerie vibe. And finally, we could do an augmented seven. Or a major seven sharp five. So let's just mix some of these chord shapes up with uh, some more familiar ones and see what we get. So we're starting to get a lot more choices, and by learning these chord shapes, you'll have a guide on which intervals to land on. And once again, we will be adding these shapes to the chord shape library on the website. So please feel free in the comments to add any chord type from any given tuning that you love, and we'll be sure to add it. And of course, thanks as always for watching.